What's going on, everybody? Best believe we're back, and today we're going to be talking about the Red Sox postseason roster. Now, it isn't officially out, but I have the projected playoff roster, and I'm going to be going over whether or not I agree with it. I will say right now, I overall, I do agree with it. There is one notable thing that is needs to be fixed, so uh, let's get into it. So the projecting starting lineup, and this is from Bleach Report. I'm not too big of a fan of Bleach Report, they, but there aren't that many good apps out there like Bleach Report. The articles themselves aren't great, but just the content and just the overall uh, like activity, I guess, is, is pretty good. So starting lineup, leading off, right field, Mookie Betts. Andrew Benintendi, batting second, left field, playing DH. Batting third, J.D. Martinez. I don't think any of that needs to be addressed. Mookie Betts is the MVP of the entire MLB, not just the AL, the entire MLB. There are going to be two MVPs, but if there were to be one, it would still be Mookie Betts. The guy is over 30 home runs, 80 RBIs, 31 stolen bases, 30, 31 stolen bases, playing a gold glove right field. has been just. He's been a little bit up and down, but still he's hitting 339 to lead the entire league. JD, if he had got that average up over bets, he probably would win MVP, although he doesn't have the, the glove or the fielding that some of the other guys like Mike Trout and Mookie Betts have. If you win the Triple Crown, that means you lead the league in RBIs, batting average, and I want to say, I don't even think that, is it home runs? I think, I guess, well, but he could have won the batting title, but Chris Davis, I guess, but he didn't, so Chris Davis has hit 247 the last, what, four years? So, no chance he's in the MVP discussion. Benintendi hasn't been showing a lot of power lately, but I know that he'll get it going in the playoffs when it matters the most. He's a guy that's been saying, as soon as the Yankees got Stanton, what did he say? I want to, in a quote, get strapped up. You want to go out there and win and beat them and show them that it doesn't matter, you know, all that. So, he's the one that's been saying that all season. He also said that the Red Sox aren't afraid to play on the road when they go into Yankee Stadium or the Coliseum in Oakland. They're going to bring the best that they got. J.D. Martinez... <laughs> This is like I had a little bit mixed reactions with him when they signed him. I was happy, of course, but I didn't think that he would be this good. I also thought that I I knew he would be good. I knew he was good in Detroit. I got to see him play a uh, tons of times. He really impressed me. Like I just mentioned, doesn't have the glove that a lot of other elite players had, but the guy drove in over 120 runs. <laughs> 40, what, 42 home runs. I don't have any stats in front of me, but that the numbers speak for themselves. This is like, He doesn't just hit home runs. He gets on base in any way, shape, or form. I think that he's going to have a huge postseason, similar to David Ortiz in 2013. If I don't know. That, he's not going to have that good of a postseason. I can say that right now. There's absolutely no way because that postseason was probably the greatest, not only that I've ever seen, but maybe anyone's ever seen. David Ortiz in 2013, what he was able to accomplish. But JD has the most home runs ever by a player in their first season with the Red Sox. And there's some good names in there. Manny Ramirez is in there. And JD surpassed him. Batting fourth playing shortstop is Xander Bogarts. I agree. Normally, you would like to go Mitch Marlin after Martinez because you want to go righty-lefty, righty-lefty. But with the way Mitch Marlin's been hitting in the last few months, even since the All-Star break, you got to put Xander Bogarts in there. He's red hot, over 100 RBIs. Who would have thought that Xander Bogarts would drive in 100 runs this season? That's just incredible, and he's playing a gold glove shortstop. He's not going to win gold glove because of the likeness of Francisco Lindor, who plays there, and, and Jelton Simmons can't leave out. Those two guys are on, are on another level, but Xander Bogertz is playing a gold glove. Nine errors all season, that's incredible. Matt, Matt, Matt Chapman of the A's, he has like 19, and he's like all everyone anyone talks about. So, Betting, what, fifth in playing first base is Mitch Marlin. If it's a lefty, I honestly would go Steve Pierce. I think he brings he brings a, more energy to the team. A, I like Mitch Marlin. He does have a much better glove than anyone else that could play the position. But but uh, if you can't hit, do you trust Mitch Marlin? I mean, I, actually, no, I take that. I think at home he'll be fine. But Mitch, I'll give him one game. If he goes 0 for 4, you got to get him out of there. That's a really important position because they're just, they could pitch around Martinez and Bogarts. And then face Moreland. And then you got Rafael Devers batting that six hole, playing third. I agree with 100%. Although Nunez has been playing well, he's been battling some injuries. Devers came back, showed great power. Doesn't have a good glove, but to say the least, we saw Devers in the postseason, two home runs, one being 
down to the Red Sox last out. So that was huge. I'm definitely uh, agreeing with that. Batting seventh and playing second base is Ian Kinsler. Kinsler came over from the Angels, of course. He's played pretty well lately. He's in his last like twenty at bats. He has like, and I'm, I know I don't have any numbers, and I probably should, but he's he has like one or two hits in his last twenty at bats. So he's been struggling much like Moreland. But that glove, gold gloves, right there. Ian Kinsler, and Mitch Moreland, both bring gold glove type caliber players to your defense. So that that is really important. Pitching and defense is what a lot of people like to say in the playoffs batting eighth and playing center field jackie bradley jr who's been one of the hottest hitters on the team since the all-star break proved everyone wrong not everyone but he proved a lot of people wrong that wanted him gone Sox nearly traded him in the offseason for yasiel puig yes puig has been hitting for power lately but he does not bring the gold glo- the glove that jackie does jackie will win his first gold glove this year i can guarantee that it's just been good in the second half. And this is probably, this is one thing that I don't agree with. And it's Christian Vasquez playing catcher and batting ninth. Sandy Leon does not get enough credit for what he does defensively. And a lot of people are starting to realize that, but they haven't all season. When Sandy Leon catches, the Red Sox hardly ever lose. And when I say hardly ever, it literally means hardly ever. Like, if they're 80% of the time going to win when, when he's catching. He can't hit for anything. Christian Vasquez brings a much better bat than Leon. Blake Swihart brings an even better bat than either of them. But that doesn't matter. If you have a guy batting ninth, if it comes down to late game and you need a hit, that's when you're going to go to a guy like Brock Holt, Eduardo Nunez, Pierce, Swihart, or Vasquez if they need that hit. And then you can just have Vasquez or Swihart catch. Now, would I want Blake Swihart catching a game? Absolutely not. That will, Blake Swihart will, unless the offense is just terrible, Blake Swihart will not be starting catching a game in the playoffs. You just can't do that. He's too young, inexperienced. Maybe not inexperienced. He's been around since, what, three years? Four, three, four years. But he doesn't bring the likeness of Sandy Leon or Vasquez. I'm fine with Vasquez starting, but I feel that Leon has earned it. When Vasquez went down, Leon stepped in, was incredible. And the pitchers trust him the most out of anybody. Now, I can't say that it's 100% correct, but it's pretty obvious the numbers show that when Sandy Leon is catching, the Red Sox are at their best. Now, for the bench bats, there are five of them. Tuesday Lynn has been left off of this list. I think that's the right call. I do. I, he's been good, but I don't see him really ha- having much of an impact in the playoffs. He'll be around next season. He'll be on the postseason roster next year, I'm sure. But are you going to put Tuzi Lin, or Tui Lin, my bad, Tui Lin, are you going to put him over Brock Holt, Eduardo Nunez, or Steve Pierce? No, you're not. You're absolutely not going to do that. Steve Pierce has been great against the Yankees, especially this season. He he can play first. He can play some outfield. Hits left-handed lefties well, hitting over 320 against them. You're... Two Wei Lin is not going to be on the postseason roster. Next on the the bench, you're going to have. I already mentioned Eduardo Nunez, Brock Holt, pretty much everybody. I think you guys know they're going to bring. We're going to run two catchers: Sandy Leon, Blake Swihart. Then they're going to use Pierce, Holt, and Nunez. Now the pitching staff is what I'm sure everybody is wondering what it's going to look like. And it starts off with Chris Sale. He will get game one. He will pitch Friday night against the New York Yankees. Now, I shouldn't say Friday night. We don't know what time that game is going to be. I'm hoping it is at night. I just feel like the energy is just more ramped up during night games. Who doesn't love night baseball? I don't want a 4 o'clock playoff game. That's absolutely ridiculous. We will get some of those. but And I don't know why I keep saying like I keep thinking this is against the Yankees. The Yankees are not guaranteed to win the wildcard game on Wednesday. They're playing the Oakland A's. Anything can happen. I expect the Yankees to win, but if they don't win, there's gonna be that's gonna be a huge issue because the A's have the lowest payroll in all of baseball. The Yankees are the Yankees. The Bronx Bombers have the most home runs ever in the history of baseball in one single season. They're, the pressure is gonna be there, but I think they'll live up to it. But Chris Sale will pitch Game One, whether that be against the Yankees or the A's. Game Two, I will be at my first ever postseason game. David Price will get that. The most important start. Really, since in years for the Red Sox, is going to be David Price. Can he go out there and pitch well? Especially if they're playing the Yankees. He has not pitched well against them over a 10-year A. 
in Yankee Stadium, even worse. Game three will be Rick Porcello. Joe Porcello has not pitched well for the Red Sox in the past two seasons in the playoffs. He's a guy that I have, honestly, <laughs> call me crazy, but I think I have the most confidence in Rick Porcello out of any pitcher on the Red Sox, and that includes the bullpen in the postseason, and here's why. Porcello is confident. He's a former Cy Young winner. In 2016, pitched phenomenal. Really the best that I've seen ever out of a pitcher, even Chris Sale. When Rick Porcello was out there, I knew they were going to win. It was just a matter of fact of would he give up two or less runs. He wasn't on the level of Chris Sale or a guy like Verlander or DeGrom or anything. like. He doesn't have the stuff that they have, but he just gets out. He's fiery. He's a guy that wants to win, and I expect him to pitch really well. I'm ho hoping that in terms of like the Red Sox starting pitching, of course you're hoping that the A's win. But even if it is the Yankee, no matter who they play, Rick Purcell is going to go out there. He's going to pitch hard. We've seen him have some really good starts. We've seen him have some really bad starts. But this is the postseason. The Red Sox will be prepared. They know that their starting pitchers don't have a win. Not one. Chris Silla, Price, Purcell, Ovaldi, Rodriguez. None, none of those guys have ever won a, a postseason start. Some of them have won out of the bullpen. Like David Price has won out of the bullpen, of course. He's been around. What, since... Like, he's been around for about 10 years, or maybe a decade, a little over. Nathan Avaldi is going to be the fourth pitcher. If the Yankees do end up winning that wild... It's, oh, I know I keep saying that the Yankees win, the A's win. That, that's how the Red Sox are approaching this. They're not going to leave. If the Yankees win on the wild card game, the Red Sox aren't going to be like, okay, we need to make sure Avaldi's in the wrong... Like, they're not going to do that. The way they're going to design it is that if they play the A's, Eduardo Rodriguez will start game four if necessary. If they play the Yankees, Nathan Avaldi will start game three if necessary. So we have Chris Sale, David Price, Rick Purcell, Nathan Avaldi, and Eduardo Rodriguez. Now for the bullpen arms, Stephen Wright with his knuckleball, Heath Hembree, Bobby Pointer, who will be the second lefty besides Rodriguez. Well, technically, Rodri it depends on who they play. Rodriguez probably will be in the bullpen. Matt Barnes, Ryan Brazier, and Craig Kimbrell. Now you're probably wondering... Joe Kelly, why is he not on this list? That's my issue at the beginning of the video when I said that there was one thing that I disagreed on, and it's right here. Heath Hembry over Joe Kelly. You have to be kidding me. Heath Hembry throws 95, doesn't have that good of stuff. He's just a solid bullpen pitcher. Cora has a lot of trust in him, which is, I guess I can see why he's on this list, but he is not Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly has been struggling, but what did he do yesterday? Was it yesterday? Today's Monday. Yeah, it was yesterday. What did Joe Kelly do yesterday? He was given one last chance. He was given about three or four. He blew them all, but he was given one last chance in the last game of the regular season. He came in, immediately let two guys on base. But then he was able to get out some good hitters such as Aaron Judge, and he was able to get out of it. He was throwing 100 miles an hour on corners. Joe Kelly... Say what you want about him. He has a devastating fastball. He throws a changeup. He has a hard slider. This is a guy that needs to be on the postseason roster. And if you think otherwise, I don't know what to tell you. There aren't any better pitchers on this list besides Craig Kimbrell that has as good a stuff as Joe Kelly. Ryan Brazier, Matt Barnes, those are guys, they're going to be eighth inning guys. But who's going to come in in a fifth or sixth inning when you need some big outs? Like, who's going to do that? Heath Hembry? Stephen Wright, Bobby Pointer, you like no, those guys are not better pitchers than Joe Kelly. Maybe you disagree with me, maybe you don't, but that's just my opinion. But I think it's the right one. Joe Kelly needs to be on the postseason roster. He also has experience. He pitched in 16 and 17 for the Red Sox. Oh wait, 16? Yeah, I'm thinking of 15. He he also started in 15 for the Red Sox and pitched really well in some not really big games, but the Red Sox they were they had, they were almost 500. About they were solid. That was when. Did Betts, I think, yeah, Betts made his debut in 14, but 15 was, 16 was Benny. But, uh, yeah, so Brian Johnson is not on this list, which I'm 100% okay with. I don't have any faith in Brian Johnson, yet alone in a playoff game or a playoff series. Nothing against Brian Johnson, good guy. He'll be solid. He'll be back next year, but he should not be on the postseason roster. He hasn't proven that he has the, the stuff. Like, this guy throws 90 miles an hour, has a pretty good sweeping curve or a slider, whatever you want to call it, but... That's not going to fool Yankee or athletic batters like Chris Davis, Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton, Jed Lowry, Matt Chapman. Like those hitter, Didi, like all these guys, it's not going to fool anybody, any of them.